Have you ever wondered how oil is extracted from the sea? A question that sparks curiosity and perhaps a sense of mystery. Oil, a resource so integral to our modern world, is more than just a black sticky substance. It's a source of energy, powering our cars, heating our homes, even contributing to the production of everyday items like plastics and cosmetics. But how do we get this valuable resource from beneath the sea? It's not as simple as just dipping a bucket. It's a complex process involving advanced technology, precise engineering, and a deep understanding of the Earth's geology. From the initial discovery of oil deposits to the final stages of refinement, each step is a marvel of human ingenuity. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll take this journey one step at a time, peeling back the layers of this intricate process. Stay with us as we dive deep into the fascinating process of oil extraction from the sea. Before oil can be extracted, it first needs to be discovered. And how is this done, you might wonder? Well, let me walk you through it. The path to discovering oil beneath the sea is a complex and fascinating process. It's like a treasure hunt, only with state-of-the-art technology instead of old, crinkled maps. It all begins with geologists, the experts in Earth's solid matter. They study the planet's history and structure to predict where oil reserves might be hiding. One of the main methods used in this discovery process is seismic surveying. Imagine shouting in a canyon and waiting for the echo. Seismic surveying works in a similar way. It involves creating shock waves which travel into the Earth, bounce off the rock layers, and return to the surface. By analyzing these echoes, geologists can form a picture of what lies beneath the surface, including the potential for oil. Another critical part of the discovery process is exploratory drilling. This is where the rubber meets the road, or rather, the drill meets the earth. Drilling a well allows scientists to actually reach the layers of rock where oil might be present. It's a bit like poking a straw into a layered cake to see what's inside. If the drill brings up oil, it's a clear sign there's an oil reserve below. But, it's not just about finding any oil, it's about finding enough oil. The quantity of oil must be substantial enough to justify the cost of extraction. It's a delicate balance between the promise of black gold and the financial realities of drilling and extraction. This discovery process is crucial because it helps oil companies determine the most promising and profitable locations for oil extraction. It's a bit like finding the X on a treasure map. Only then can the next phase of setting up an oil rig begin. Once potential oil reserves are discovered, it's time to set up an oil rig. But that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this intriguing journey of oil extraction from the sea. Setting up an oil rig is no easy task. It's a monumental endeavor, a testament to human engineering and grit. Picture a bustling city skyline, then imagine it floating in the middle of the ocean. That's the scale we're talking about here. The first step is to select the perfect location. Geologists and engineers work in tandem, using technology like seismic surveys and exploratory drilling to find a suitable spot for the rig. Once a location is identified, a temporary drilling rig is set up to drill a well. This well will later be used to extract oil. Now, building the oil rig is a mammoth task in itself. These structures are made to weather the harshest sea conditions. Think about it. They need to be strong enough to withstand stormy seas, high winds, and even the occasional iceberg. The rig's design is meticulously planned to ensure stability and safety. The main part of the oil rig is the jacket, a steel frame anchored to the seabed. This jacket supports the top side, which houses the drilling apparatus, processing facilities, and the crew's living quarters. The top side is like a small town, equipped with everything the crew needs to live and work offshore for weeks at a time. After the rig's structure is in place, the drilling equipment is installed. This includes the drill pipe, drill bits, and a blowout preventer, a critical safety device designed to seal the well in case of a sudden pressure change. Finally, the rig is connected to a network of pipelines. These pipelines transport the oil from the rig to storage facilities on shore. It's an intricate process, requiring precision and expertise. But setting up the rig is just the start. Maintaining and operating the rig is a round-the-clock job. The crew works in shifts, ensuring the rig runs smoothly and safely. It's a demanding job, but the reward is the black gold that fuels our world. With the oil rig in place, the extraction process can begin. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the fascinating world of offshore oil extraction. Now, it's time to get to the heart of the matter, the extraction process. This is where the magic happens. 
where the black gold as some call it is brought to the surface from the depths of the sea. Let's start at the beginning. The first step involves drilling a well into the oil reservoir beneath the seafloor. Picture a giant drill bit, churning and grinding its way through layers of rock and sediment. The drilling is done by a machine called a drill rig. This drill rig is a marvel of engineering, capable of drilling miles into the Earth's crust. But the drill bit can't do all the work alone. It needs a little help from something called drilling mud. This is a special mixture of water, clay, and chemicals. The drilling mud is pumped down the drill pipe and out through the drill bit. It serves a dual purpose, cooling the drill bit and carrying the crushed rock back up to the surface. Now, as you might imagine, drilling a hole miles deep into the earth creates a rather unstable situation. We don't want our well to collapse, do we? So, to keep everything in place, we use something called a casing pipe. This is a large metal pipe that is inserted into the well to stabilize it. Once the well is drilled and stabilized, we're ready for the main event, the extraction of the oil. Now, in some cases, the oil might start flowing naturally to the surface due to the pressure in the reservoir. But more often than not, we need to give it a little nudge. This is where secondary recovery methods come into play. One common method is water injection. Here, water is pumped into the oil reservoir to increase the pressure and push the oil towards the well. Another method is gas injection, which works on the same principle but uses gas instead of water. But wait, there's more. In some cases, even secondary recovery methods aren't enough. Then we move on to tertiary recovery methods, also known as enhanced oil recovery. This might involve injecting steam or chemicals into the reservoir to make the oil flow more easily. Now, you might be wondering, how do we know when we've extracted all the oil? Well, the truth is, we never really do. It's estimated that only about half of the oil in a reservoir can be extracted using current technology. And there you have it, the step-by-step -step process of extracting oil from beneath the sea. It's a complex and fascinating process, involving a blend of geology, engineering, and a bit of guesswork. But it's all worth it in the end, because this is how we get the oil that powers our world. After the oil is extracted, it's not ready for use just yet. But that's a story for another scene. Stay tuned for the next part of our journey into the world of oil extraction, where we'll explore the refining process, the final step in turning crude oil into the products we use every day. Extracted oil must undergo a refinement process before it can be used. This is where the magic happens, where the crude, unprocessed oil is transformed into the everyday products we rely on. Now, imagine the oil as a cocktail of various substances, all mixed together. Our job is to separate these ingredients, and that's where the first step of the refinement process, distillation, comes in. Picture a tall cylindrical tower, known as a distillation column. The crude oil is heated and pumped into the base of the column. As the temperature decreases going up the column, the different substances within the oil start to separate based on their boiling points. The heavier ones like bitumen and asphalt stay at the bottom, while lighter ones like gasoline, kerosene, and diesel rise to the top. But the process doesn't end there. We still have some impurities to deal with. This is where chemical treatments come into play. Through a process called cracking, heavy molecules are broken down into lighter ones, making them more useful. There are different types of cracking, but the most commonly used is catalytic cracking. This involves using a catalyst to speed up the chemical reaction, breaking down the larger molecules into smaller, more useful ones. Now, the oil has been distilled and treated, but we're not finished yet. We still have some unwanted substances to remove. Processes like hydrotreating and desulfurization are used to remove sulfur, nitrogen, and other contaminants from the oil. This is an important step as these impurities can be harmful when released into the environment. And there you have it. The crude oil has been transformed. It's been distilled, treated, and purified, broken down, and built back up. It's now separated into useful products like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. These are the fuels that power our cars, heat our homes, and enable our planes to fly. The refined oil is now ready for distribution and use. It's quite a journey, isn't it? From the depths of the sea to the gas station around the corner, the story of oil is a marvel of modern engineering and chemistry. Extracting oil from the sea is not without its challenges and risks. Indeed, it's a complex process, a dance of machinery, human ingenuity, and nature. And sometimes, nature fights back. One of the most significant environmental impacts of offshore oil extraction is the risk of oil spills. These disastrous events can have far-reaching and long-lasting effects on marine ecosystems. The oil forms a thick sludge on the ocean surface, 
blocking sunlight and impeding the photosynthesis of marine plants and phytoplankton, the base of the ocean food chain. This consequently impacts all species up the food chain, from tiny crustaceans to large predatory fish and marine mammals. Oil spills are not the only concern. There is also the matter of operational discharges. These are the byproducts of drilling that are often released into the ocean, including drilling muds and produced waters. These discharges can contain heavy metals and other toxic substances, posing further threats to marine life. Oil exploration and extraction can also disrupt marine habitats. The seismic surveys used to locate oil reserves generate loud sounds that can disturb or harm marine mammals, including whales and dolphins. The physical presence of oil rigs can also alter the local environment, affecting the distribution and behavior of marine species. But it's not all doom and gloom. The industry has made significant strides in implementing safety measures to prevent accidents and minimize environmental impact. These include rigorous equipment testing and maintenance protocols, advanced oil spill response strategies, and strict waste management practices. For example, blowout preventers, large specialized valves attached to the wellhead, are designed to seal off the well in the event of a sudden pressure surge. Regular testing and maintenance of these devices is critical in preventing uncontrolled oil releases. In the event of an oil spill, rapid and effective response is crucial. This may involve the use of booms to contain the spill, skimmers to remove the oil from the water surface, or even dispersants to break down the oil into smaller droplets that can be more easily degraded by natural processes. Meanwhile, waste management practices aim to reduce the amount of operational discharges. This can involve the reuse or recycling of drilling fluids, or the treatment of produced waters to remove harmful substances before they are discharged. However, despite these measures, the risk is not entirely eliminated. Hence, it's crucial that we continue to improve these safety measures and look for more sustainable sources of energy. The future of our oceans and our planet depends on it. As we continue to harness the power of the sea, we must also respect its fragility and strive for harmony in our interactions with it. After all, the sea is not just a resource to be exploited, but a world to be explored, understood, and protected. It's crucial that we continue to improve these safety measures and look for more sustainable sources of energy. So that's how oil is extracted from the sea, a complex yet fascinating process. It's an intricate ballet of technology, geology, and human endeavor that powers our modern world. We started our journey with the discovery process, where seismic surveys are used to map the seabed, and exploratory drilling is carried out to confirm the presence of oil. It's a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack, but with the help of modern technology, we are able to pinpoint the location of these precious resources with incredible accuracy. Then we dived into setting up the oil rig, a colossal structure that stands as a testament to human ingenuity. These rigs, whether fixed or floating, are marvels of engineering designed to withstand extreme weather conditions and the relentless waves of the sea, all while drilling thousands of feet into the Earth's crust. Next, we explored the extraction process itself, where the oil is brought to the surface. We learned about the role of drilling muds, the importance of pressure control, and the challenges of extracting oil from beneath the ocean floor. It's a process that requires precision, control, and a deep understanding of the physical properties of oil and the earth it's found in. From there, we moved on to the refinement process. This is where the crude oil is transformed into the various products we use every day from gasoline for our cars, to the plastic materials that make up so much of our modern lives. Finally, we addressed the environmental impact of oil extraction and the measures taken to minimize harm. The industry's commitment to safety and the environment is paramount, with rigorous standards and continuous monitoring in place to protect our planet. In conclusion, the journey from sea to oil tank is a feat of human innovation, balancing the need for energy with the responsibility to our environment Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of oil extraction. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to iPick for more fascinating insights. Until next time.